I'm going to move on to the next operator, which is our VEX operator. I'm going to start by deleting our torus and putting down what's called a platonic solid. If we dive inside, we have the platonic SOP. And here we can choose a variety of different platonic solid shapes. So we have octahedron, icosahedron, dodecahedron, soccer ball. I'm going to use the Utah teapot today. So now we're on to VOPS, which stands for VEX operators. VEX is Houdini's native scripting language, and it could be hard coded using the Wrangle node. So all these Wrangle nodes are exactly the same, except they execute on different facets of our geometry. The most widely used would be attribute and point Wrangle. So if I lay this down here, we have our VEX expression box where we can type in our code. Another way to use VEX in Houdini is using VOPS. So again, these are VEX operators. So if I type in VOP, we're going to make use of an attribute VOP. So I'm going to pipe in our platonic and visualize the VOP and dive inside. So here we're presented with an input node and an output node. And now we're in a different context called the VEX builder. So this is an entirely different logic to the other operators and again we have a completely different menu when we press tab so uh, this context works left to right instead of up and down as we've seen in the other context and whatever is inputted into our geometry can be manipulated with vops between these two nodes so i went over all of these attributes which can be manipulated in, in this context in my last tutorial and we're going to do a simple operation of moving all the points up by two units so if i lay down a constant this is just simply a constant value that we can use in our vop operations i'm going to put this up to two and we're going to try to move all these points up so if i make an add vop i'm going to be adding the position of our points to two. So I'm going to pipe this into our position. And now we can see that the teapot has been transformed two units in Y, X, and Z. If I only want to constrain this to the Y axis, I'm going to go into my constant, change this to a vector, and put two in our Y slot. So again, the VOP is a visual representation of VEX code. And we can see our counterpart VEX code if we right click, go to VEX VOP options and view VEX code. So basically what we did in our VOP is representative of this code. So if I type this same exact thing in our attribute wrangle, we have, we'll have the same operation happening. And actually our attribute wrangle is a VOP itself because if we dive inside, we have an attribute VOP. And inside here we have a snippet, which is basically like a wrangle VOP. In the snippet, we can put in our code in here and it will execute. If we wanna hard code the same operation we did in the VOP inside our wrangle, the code would look like this. So if I type at for attribute P dot Y for our Y position, plus equals two semicolon, it's going to move all the points up two units and it'll look exactly the same as our VOP. Let's change up our geometry for some variety. I'm going to put down another test geometry, which is the rubber toy. So here we're doing the exact same operation on our rubber toy, but now let's do something a bit more interesting. Let's get rid of these and try to put a noise onto our rubber toy. So our VOP network comes with a bunch of different noises. And in this case, I'm gonna make use of the turbulent noise. So if I lay this down and again, add the position to the manipulated noise. What we'll get is all of these points being displaced by our turbulent noise. And these parameters can 
change the look of the noise. So if I go to 3D, they're going to be displaced in three dimensions. And we can play with all these different parameters. What we can do now is promote some of these parameters to the VOP inside our SOP network. So these are represented over here for custom inputs. So if, if I want to again put down a constant and drive one of these values with a constant, I can do that. But we can also promote these parameters by pressing the middle mouse button while hovering over it and going to promote parameter. So now if we go up, we can see that we have a frequency vector parameter. And now we can control it from our SOP. So that's it for VOPs in a nutshell. And now I'm going to talk about ROPs, which stands for render operators. So what I'm going to do now is switch our context by holding down left mouse button and going to out. So now we're presented with a different context called outputs. This is our ROP context. This has everything to do with rendering. So if I press tab again, we have a completely different menu. And if I go to render, we have all these different render ops for Mantra, which is uh, Houdini's native render engine. Or if you have Redshift or Octane or Arnold or anything like that, they'll show up in here. So I use Redshift. So if I put down a Redshift ROP, it's going to come with an IPR, which will be linked to the IPR window that Redshift comes with. But I'm just going to focus on this node right here. So this is just basically all your render settings. And you can define the render camera and a variety of different options here for outputting our files, our AOVs, which are render passes. And here we have all our Redshift settings. So sampling, motion blur, global illumination, and so on. So just to set up a normal render here for Redshift, I'm going to go back into my camera. It's locked, so I can frame our little rubber toy. And if I go into render view, we should be able to see something over here. And there we go. Super basic, but we just have the one light illuminating our toy. So ROPs aren't only limited to rendering frames or videos. Our objects can be rendered too, which is basically like a geometry output. So if I go back into object and go into platonic, say we want to export our geometry here. This is also done by a kind of ROP. So if I type in ROP, we can output an alembic or this default ROP geometry output. So let's connect this up to here. And here we can define our output file. And bgao.sc is Houdini's native file format. But we can also type in uh, obj or fbx or whatever you want in here. And we can actually render animated objects this way. So if I save this project by pressing Control S, maybe saving it to the desktop, I'll make a new folder and call it hb3. So hip is our project file. So I'm going to name this hp3, sorry, hb3. So now I want to talk about this naming convention. So $hip means current hip file. So wherever I saved our project is where this geometry is going to go. So it's going to create a geometry folder for us. And here it's going to automatically name it for us. So dollar sign is current. Hip name is the name of our project. Dollar sign OS is the current name of our node. Dollar F is the current frame. And here we have the file format. So let's try to execute this on the current frame. So I'm going to hit save to disk. And if I navigate to my desktop, here is our geometry. I can load back the geometry by hitting the equals sign. And it's going to bring in our manipulated rubber toy. Otherwise, I can put down a file sop and load it in from here. So the next context I want to talk about are the two different material contexts we can find in Houdini. So if I hold down 
the mouse button here again, we have matte context and shop context. These are pretty much exactly the same. The matte context is new in Houdini and there's very subtle differences, which I won't go over in this lesson. So we go, if we go into our matte, this is actually a good time to introduce the concept of quick marks. So if I don't want to keep going into this menu in order to switch between our different contexts, I can make a sort of keyboard shortcut by holding down control and pressing any number. So say I want my matte context to be associated with the two key. I'm going to hold down control and press two. And then I'm going to go back to my objects and press control one. And I'm going to go into out and press control three. So now I can quickly switch between my different contexts. So here we are on the matte context. And as you can see, this is our VEX builder once again. So all the materials in Houdini work under the VOPS context. So if I press tab here, we have some additional nodes for materials, but these are basically uh, VOP operators. So I'm going to make a basic Redshift material by putting down RS material and Redshift material. And again, you can see that these go left to right, just like our VOPs. And in here we have all our different material parameters. Now shops is basically exactly the same, except here we need to make containers. There's different ways to apply materials within Houdini. In this case, I'm gonna use the matte context and choose uh, the paper preset within our Redshift material. I'm gonna make another teapot once again. So if I lay down a platonic and go down into Utah teapot. So in order to convert it, we need to lay down a convert sop. So it can turn into polygons. Redshift has its own lights. So I'm gonna switch out this mantra light for an RS light, which is uh, Redshift's area light and I'm going to look through it to position it to the side of the camera. So now I want to be able to see our scene view through the camera as well as our render buffer. So I'm going to split this view top and bottom and right click on this tab and load in the redshift render view. Let's see if we get anything. And here we have our teapot with the paper shader applied. Let's go back into our materials. And oh, we actually have not applied it yet. So the easiest way to apply a material is to simply drag it right onto our object. And it has to be highlighted yellow like so. So now we see our reflections have gone away because the paper material has been applied. Let's change this color to see if we get any changes in our render, and we do. So back in our object context, if I go into my platonic, into the render tab, we can see that we have a material association here. So if I clear this, we're gonna go back to the default material. For more control over material associations inside the SOP, we can actually lay down a material SOP, like so. And if I flag this and find our material in here, it's going to apply it like so. So even if I have more objects here, let's say a box or another platonic, icosahedron, I can put in another material and merge these like so. And now we need to put another material onto our platonic solid. So first of all, I'm gonna move it out of the way and see if we can get another material going for our new shape. So all I'm gonna do is copy these by holding Alt and dragging up and maybe giving this one a different color. Now back in our SOP, 
I'm going to find our new material in our new material SOP field. So here we go, it's Redshift Material 2, and now we can see that our object turns into our new color. So next up we have Chops. I'm going to press 1 again to go back to our objects. And Chops stands for uh, Channel Operators. So channels are all of these slots, they're parameters. And channel operators can operate on them. So the simplest way to lay down a chop network is to right click on any parameter that you want uh, manipulated and go down to our motion effects menu. Say I want to put some noise on our translate and here we are presented with a chop network. So again we have a different context called motion effects and we have a different menu with completely different nodes. So the way this works is it fetches our geometry. So we are working on the platonic one and we're manipulating the translation X. So the channel chop is fetching our geometry and we are applying noise to it. So this is like a preset. You can click on any parameter and go into the motion effects and it's basically going, going to build a network for you inside the chop. So let's see this in action. We have this noise applied to our X translation, but let's do something a bit more interesting. I'm just gonna get rid of this and I'm going to lay down a chop network inside our SOPs. So we already have this noise applied with a frequency so let's see if we can put some motion effects on this frequency channel. Let's try wave this time. I'm just gonna apply a simple sine function to it. And now we get this sort of oscillating noise happening. These chop networks can be built from scratch. So we can lay down these nodes one by one and fetch it manually and apply our different channel operations to it. Last but not least, we have our compositing context, which is called COPS. If I click on IMG, this is gonna bring us to our compositing network. So this is again, a sort of top level container type deal. So if I dive inside here, we have our compositing. To visualize what's going on in our compositing network, we have to go to composite view. So this works basically like any other node-based compositing software like Nuke or Fusion, but it's a little bit more bare bones. So, so again, we have a completely different menu. And if I go into uh, an import file, we're presented with a default picture of a butterfly, which Houdini ships with. So you can fetch any image on your computer into this file path by loading it up in here. And we can apply it different compositing operations such as color, let's say levels, we'll connect it over and we can shift the gamma and then you can put a blur on it and so on. The cool thing about COPS is you can transfer these images over to other contexts. So say you want to use an image inside a texture, you can export something from the compositing network into a texture in our material context. Lastly, we can use any of our different contexts within each other, so they can cross-pollinate. So as we saw, we did have a chop network inside a SOP network, and we also had a DOP network inside our object menu. Likewise, we can have a material network in our SOP network, and we can build our materials in here for quicker access inside our stops. So this is all kind of based on personal preference and how you like to navigate Houdini. So I hope I provided a good overview of all the different operators within Houdini. I tried to just simply point out the essentials of them and how they're used. And thanks for watching.